Politics and Cultural Heritage, Lessons from the Past, the Present and for the Future. Politics is fundamentally about how groups advance themselves and their interests within society. Most scholars would agree that there has always been a relationship between politics and heritage which develops at some level in every nation, regardless of the particular political and economic circumstances. Heritage is an important part of identity and it is for this reason that the past can be used to legitimise political claims of national identity, ethnicity and territory. The passions and interests involved in politics can have extreme consequences which are often pernicious. People can be imprisoned, lose their jobs, land, starve or even die. Although the practice and research of cultural heritage does not directly cause this to happen, or wage wars and conduct genocide, it can however contribute to the legitimisation of a government which does. Political ideologies have had a profound effect on the understanding of the past and how it is presented to the general public. Dictators have long realised the ideological importance of heritage and the potential for heritage as a political tool. In the late 1970s and 80s, scholars became concerned of the blatant political manipulation of archaeological data, but also believed it was unavoidable as nationalist archaeology was embedded within most regional research. A revelation was that archaeological data during the 20th century had been adopted to promote bigotry, violence and destruction just as much as it had been used to promote social justice. A well-known example is Hitler's Nazi Germany, where archaeology and anthropology was used in the invention of tradition and ethnic preservation. Nazi archaeologists supported racial and expansionist ideologies of supremacy, which was readily accepted by both the leader and the general population. Theories of superior Germanic past culture and anthropomorphic uniqueness of German people provided justification for expansionism, especially into Slavic territories. The Nazi regime readily pushed the new Germanic prehistory as a potent method of fostering national and racial pride, incorporating ancient symbols such as the runic SS symbol and Iron Age Laten swastika of the Third Reich. While promoting a new nationalist identity, the Nazis set about destroying and marginalised anything that did not correspond with Nazi ideology. In parallel with the murder of millions of minority groups, an estimated 100 million books were destroyed, artefacts looted and works of art stolen. The exploitation of cultural heritage by the Nazis brought about the 1954 United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organisation UNESCO, for the protection of cultural property in the event of armed conflict. The 20th century saw many regions such as the Balkans, Soviet Union, Israel and India go through a process of political restructuring and ethnic religious upheavals which spark relationships with particular historical trajectories, nostalgic and commemorative, and with the forceful materiality of archaeological remains. The use of archaeological data was noted for being manipulated in contemporary world affairs during the 1990s. Within the Balkans ethnic wars and Saddam Hussein's cultural claims to Mesopotamia's ancient past as justification to invade Kuwait. Saddam's interests in archaeology were overtly political and during his regime he ordered the reconstruction and cultural revitalization of the ancient city of Babylon and likened himself to Nebuchadnezzar. In Saddam's view, Iraqi nationalist pride was not only in the land itself, but in the character of its people, those who had occupied the land for millennia and who shared an Arab personality. He believed Iraq played a more senior, unique role than other Arab countries because it absorbed its earlier cultural past. This Ba'athist ideology was of the belief that Iraq's history to be continuous with the origins of civilization, which gave Iraq an emboldened supremacy in its attack on Iran and Kuwait. Throughout history, destruction and loss of cultural heritage have frequently occurred as a result of armed conflict or the consequence of iconoclasm. The iconoclastic destruction of cultural heritage is a reality which UNESCO can do little about. Where and whenever it happens, it is always religiously and politically correct when it is in the national control. In 2001, the Taliban in Afghanistan called for the destruction of non-Islamic sculptures in the country. Just when UNESCO appeared to be addressing the situation, the Kabul Museum and sites such as the Buddha's Abimian had been destroyed. This was a deliberate, calculated act to control. 
not just the nation, but also its heritage in order to legitimise political and religious authority. After the iconoclastic destruction of cultural heritage in Afghanistan, UNESCO stressed the importance of world heritage and called for states to impose criminal sanctions against such acts, whether listed by UNESCO or elsewhere. The decision of archaeological investigation, preservation and non-preservation is often in the hands of politicians and professionals, which can lead to the exploitation of heritage to attract tourists and investors. Political, religious and cultural ideologies can impact powerfully and often negatively on archaeological practice and interpretation throughout the world. Heritage when presented in relation to cultural identity can ignore past realities and lead to the creation of myth-making. Nation states use heritage to promote themselves positively in the present, often ignoring past injustices such as class exploitation, social economic inequality and exclude the culture of minority groups. Changing moralities regarding whose heritage and how it should be investigated, preserved, conserved and presented are subjects which have affected and changed how museums operate. While some have become more protective of their collections, others have become more engaging and interactive with the public. Many museums have a controversial past on how certain objects in their collection were acquired and presented. Political and legal claims regarding ownership of cultural heritage led to sensitive issues of identity, memory and social impact. Requests for the repatriation of cultural heritage has become the subject that highlights such issues and raises questions regarding the role of museums and their moral responsibilities to cultural heritage they acquire, research and hold in their collections. Repatriation will be discussed in the next video by Simple Archaeology. Please subscribe for notifications.